Sorry to keep you waiting, but uh, I guess you can understand there's a fair bit going on at the moment. You guys, about right? Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the uh, the weather situation remains uh, probably the best news uh, that uh, it's remaining clear uh, that rain uh, is contracting. There was a fair bit of rain uh, just inland from Mackay uh, overnight, uh, but that hasn't caused any uh, any significant problems or uh, caused any uh, inflows into the uh, into the major problem areas. Uh, I might just go straight into uh, into the key areas uh, of concern at the moment. Uh, Bundaberg, um, the Burnett River uh, at Bundaberg has uh, peaked at around 9.72 metres uh, and that level is holding. Uh, we expect that that will remain at that level for the balance of, uh, of today and this evening uh, and that will start to fall away from tomorrow. Uh, to give you a picture of, uh, of Bundaberg, we're just getting these uh, reports from the ground. Uh, the evacuation centre has had 127 people overnight, uh, two evacuation centres. Um, there are approximately 190 houses that have been affected and 40 businesses. I can't give you details around what the damage is. Uh, we'll have to wait till water goes down and people can get back in and, uh, and undertake some inspections of those uh, properties. There's around uh, 1,800 uh, properties without power, uh, but utilities, uh, water sewerage, uh, etc., the telecommunications uh, are all OK. So uh, Bundaberg uh, is in the middle of its flood uh, at the moment. If we move on to, uh, to Emerald, uh, Emerald's currently uh, at 15.6 metres and rising. The peak is expected on Friday at 16.2 metres. What that equates to is a flood of 0.8 of a metre higher than 2008. So this is a very significant event. Uh, we expect that 80% of the town will have water through it. Now, that doesn't mean that every house will have water over the floorboards, but approximately 80% of the town on current modelling will be affected uh, by floodwaters. Uh, the record uh, for Emerald is 15.7 metres uh, back in 1950. So, as you can see, this is a pretty significant uh, event. Evacuations at present, uh, there are 92 people evacuated overnight. Um, Planning is difficult. A lot of people are away on holidays, so it's difficult to ascertain how many people are there. Uh, the local council is planning for evacuations of up to 2,500 people. Utilities in Emerald will hold up OK. Uh, we've taken um, yesterday um, a transmission tower in so that the local radio station can continue to broadcast messages. Uh, and we've been using the uh, emergency alert telephone-based warning system to continue to provide messages to the community to contact their local council and uh, keep abreast of, uh, of what's happening. Uh, the rail bridge, which was used as uh, a source of access uh, in the last flood, uh, what happens with Emerald is the town gets cut in half. Um, and the airport is on, on the side where most of the people aren't. Um, so we were able to bring um, things into the airport and then move them across by rail. The rail bridge closed at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, the airport will remain OK. It's, uh, it's high and dry. Uh, roads in the area are closed and Emerald is currently uh, isolated. Uh, Coles is inundated, has water through the store and, is in as, and has closed and Woolworths uh, will probably go under later today or tomorrow. 
Uh, there has been a temporary medical facility established on the eastern side of town, the opposite side to the hospital. Um, so that's been staffed and, uh, and uh, Queensland Health have bought um, yeah, drugs and, and so on uh, in so that there is access to medical facilities on, uh, on both sides of, uh, of town. If we move to uh, Rockhampton, uh, Rockhampton, uh, the Fitzroy River is currently at 8 metres. By Sunday morning, that's expected to be 9 metres. By Tuesday, 9.4 metres. Um, to give you some equivalent, uh, that's around about the flood levels of 1991 and 1956. At the moment, that's the extent of the modelling, uh, but that modelling continues to, uh, to go on as we get readings from, uh, as the Bureau of Meteorology gets readings from, uh, from other rivers that uh, flow into the Fitzroy. The record for your information there is 10.1 metres uh, in 1918. For Rockhampton, uh, utilities uh, are fine, uh, power is good to 10 metres and uh, the water purification to 11 metres, so there's not any expectation that there'll be a problem uh, with those. Um, access will be, the rail closes uh, when the water gets to about 8.5 metres. Uh, the road to the airport also closes at around 8.5 metres uh, and the airport gets water on the tarmac somewhere between 8.8 .8 and 8.9. There's been work done on the airport so that's why there's a little variation there. Uh, the highway access uh, to the south is lost at 8.4 metres and to the north, again there's been work done on bridges, expected that that uh, will be lost at around the 9.4. So access north at this stage could continue uh, but we're not planning uh, for that to occur. Um, council is uh, recasting their numbers based on the latest forecast. Their last forecasts were uh, for a, a flood height of 9 metres and at 9 metres there would be 140 properties with water over the floorboards and 1,000 properties with water into the yards. Um, currently uh, the local council is undertaking evacuation planning um, and that will be on the basis of um, well over a thousand uh, people that may require uh, support for evacuation. Turning to uh, the evacuation of the township of Theodore, um, something slightly in excess of 300 people are being housed uh, at Maura at the moment. Department of Communities, uh, other agencies uh, are there to support them. Uh, we understand that people are holding up well, um, you know, children are being given activities to do, uh, people are being um, spoken to, if anybody requires counselling that service is available uh, and Department of Communities are talking through um, what the future might hold for those people. Um, clearly they have been through a very traumatic time, uh, they've been taken from their homes um, and uh, as I say from all reports uh, they are holding up remarkably well um, and we certainly uh, you know, hope that that uh, continues and everything will be done uh, to ensure that those people are supported. On top of that, um, as you understand, uh, the extent of this flood is, is significant. Um, there are uh, many small communities that are going to require resupply. Um, and that work is being done now. Um, as always, the work starts at local government area. Those, those local governments have their plans in place. Um, should access to resources become a problem, they will simply uh, make a request uh, through their district, uh, run by the, uh, by the police, their district disaster coordinator, and will identify if resources can be uh, accessed locally. Um, if they can't be accessed within the region, then a request is made to state. Uh, we can pull assets from across the state, we can pull assets from across Australia. Um, if necessary, we can go back to the military and request additional assets. Uh, there are already three Black Hawk helicopters um, that have been provided uh, for the ADF. Two of those are currently en route uh, to Emerald to support the efforts there. If we may need to move people or um, product from one side of the river to the other, they will be there to assist um, with, uh, with that. The, um, in those other communities that have been affected, uh, water um, is continuing to, uh, to cause us not concern at this stage, but certainly uh, it's an issue for us to watch um, to ensure that uh, quality potable water is available um, in those places. Um, Dolby, for example, um, only has probably two days' supply left. 
Um, so at the moment we are uh, trucking water into Dalby and that's being used to top up the reservoir. Um, there'll probably be in the order of 112 to 120,000 litres of water uh, trucked in today. Uh, we will look at other options uh, as to whether water purification may be an option there, um, but if we can continue to truck and that's the most efficient and effective way, um, then we'll continue um, that process. Uh, if I can just make a, a plea, we have been asking people to, um, to ensure that their travel plans are essential. We have a situation now at Jinjin Jin, uh, where there's probably a thousand cars and more than two thousand people um, who haven't planned their trip and are now stuck at Jinjin, Jin, and they are looking for support. So what's happening is that vital services that can be provided to the people who are affected by the flood and are, you know, are now having to be diverted. So attention and people and planning needs to be diverted to, to those people. So we implore people, roads continue to be cut. Some of them will be cut for extended periods of time. So if you can plan your travel, uh, if, you, if it's unlikely that you get, can get through to your destination, then stay where you are. Um, I'll probably pass to Brett to make some more comment on that. Uh, thanks very much, Bruce. Good morning, everyone. And uh, also from uh, QPS, thank you for your patience this morning. Uh, uh, as Bruce correctly pointed out, uh, uh, this is a statewide event and it's likely to be uh, sustained uh, uh, for a week or even more than a week. Uh, so uh, it's a very complex event and we appreciate your patience. From a police perspective, there's really three issues I'd like to address. Bruce has given a very good summary of what's happening around the state. Uh, the main issues, uh, I think, from a police perspective are very much around uh, letting people know that uh, we have deployed uh, additional resources uh, from Operation Support Command, from, straight, from State Crime Operations Command. Uh, far northern and northern regions have also uh, made staff available to go into the towns that uh, are the most affected uh, by this uh, disaster. We, uh, we have additional police, particularly in the Theodore, uh, Emerald uh, and Rockhampton. And of course our primary uh, interest, uh, apart from assisting with the, the response and recovery, is around the protection of uh, property uh, as people evacuate their homes and move into evacuation centres. It's important to note that uh, certainly from a police perspective we haven't had, uh, thankfully, have not had any reports of looting. But of course that's uh, one of our main issues is to maintain the uh, security of people's property as they assist us uh, in evacuating to areas of safety. Uh, the next issue is around New Year's Eve. Um, we're appealing to people um, who are celebrating New Year's Eve to uh, keep their behaviour in check. Uh, the last thing we want to see is um, for very important resources to be diverted away uh, from incidents that are otherwise preventable. Uh, we'd like to think that uh, we've got the community support, that we're all focused on this uh, very significant event and the last thing we want to do is have to divert uh, key personnel away from uh, response and recovery duties to attend to uh, disturbances that are, could otherwise be prevented. So, And we really appreciate your assistance in getting that message out. The third issue is around transport and travel. Uh, as we move into recovery and resupply, uh, around the state becomes an issue. We're very conscious uh, that we may have small windows of opportunity to access uh, uh, major highways as some waters go up and others go down. Uh, and we're appealing to people to factor the current events into their travel. Uh, the website 131940 is constantly being updated and we ask people to visit that uh, and to factor into their travel plans uh, the current events. Uh, if you do have to travel, if a travel is essential, uh, think about the 